Bridges fascinate us. They connect two places, but are of neither. Bridges are places between places. They're nowhere. Stories we all heard as kids seem to center on bridges. From the troll in the shadows taunting the three billy goats gruff, to the union hanging that went awry at Owl Creek, even Ichabod Crane's fate was decided only if he could cross the bridge at the edge of town to escape the vengeful headless horseman. Storytellers have long understood that bridges might connect us to something other than our destination, something unknown. People of Pine Bluff, Arkansas understand this better than most. I've always kind of heard the story of Dexter Harding, even as a small child. I remember faintly the Sawdust Bridge, but really didn't know about Dexter Harding until uh, Pine Bluff Downtown Development became an office here. He was born in New York. He was 16 when he went to the War of 1812. And people that lived and worked toward in the war era got land grants. But that's really the reason he and his wife came to Arkansas, thinking they would get a piece of of the community and he came to town in 1850. This house was built and or completed in 1853. He had a sawmill and that's where we get the sawdust bridge because the sawdust made a pathway from uh, one part of the town to the other. And even here you can see where the bridge was. He started on one side and he moved all the way across, cutting all the trees off his land, cutting the wood into useful timber. Trees are nothing but trees until you cut them. I've heard the stories of ghosts, people seeing ghosts. I have never seen them, but then again, if you've ever been around a sawmill, the one thing that sawmills generate is sawdust. You can't cut wood without getting sawdust. And Dexter Hyden, what, what he do, he take this, he, where he lived at was the Oxbow Lake. he go down there and he'd dump his sawdust on a corner of the lake. He just dumped it. And as he kept dumping it, it kept easing out. Because he kept on going, kept on going. He was, must, have been, must have had a real good business because that was a whole lot. Of dust. The lake was pretty big. And his mill was set here and he would start bringing the sawdust and putting it across here. Now, the way the map read is that he blocked off this end. It became a complete bridge all the way across from here up to 8th Street. But he kept dumping this uh, dust in the lake. He flooded, he dammed it, which is pretty good. Unless you have ever been on sawdust. Sawdust is not dirt, it's not solid. And it, as it goes along, it gets this little ushy, ushy type feel to it. They said there were snakes and there were eerie lights like ghosts were all around the lake. In the darkness, a lot of people had to cross it and I'm sure they just had their lanterns and their horse-drawn buggies or their walking. And so it was a very fearful time for people to do that and they whizzed across it as quickly as they could. And to walk across that sawdust bridge with that scritchy face and that moving of the earth and everything on there. Lisa Stokes, the dead woman, the headless man. As, as the story goes, that people believed it and they kept telling it. Oh, you had to be careful of the sawdust, you know, down about the sawdust bridge. That's what they call it back then. They always used to tell us, old folks used to tell us, you better watch it, boy. You know, so and so got killed down there. We don't know who got killed down there. I found out it's good to tell the story. You know, a ghost story is always good, especially when, as a kid, we used to camp out near there. A ghost story always makes the day better. For many, the stories of the Sawdust Bridge did more than just pass the time. 
People believed the story so completely that Pine Bluff stopped growing and began to suffer as a city. Settlers chose homesteads to the east and west along the Arkansas River. The problem became so bad the town leaders chose to abandon the bridge for a more costly main street. Haunted or not, Harding's sawdust bridge was lost to the spirits who seemed to call it home. They drain the lake. You drain the lake, get it dry, and the stories keep on coming back. See, that's, what, that's what happens with stories like that. They just keep on showing up. You can't lose a story because the lake's no longer there. I, I know I have a ghost of Dexter Harding in here at times when in this house. I mean, he's a good ghost, but things are like he's gone through our things and dismantled. And of course, when the computer doesn't act right, I always say Dexter Harding is after me. <laughs> Oftentimes, stories of ghosts and eerie places long forgotten are cast aside as nonsense. Was Harding Sawdust Bridge truly a gathering place for restless spirits? We'll never know. But in the case of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, the power of truth wasn't nearly as important as the power of belief. Early Arkansans believed the bridge was dangerous enough to convince them not to settle there. A bridge is just a means to a destination, but a silly superstition held the town of Pine Bluff hostage. Harding Sawdust Bridge became a hurdle that could only be overcome by being destroyed. Sure, the stories surrounding the Sawdust Bridge were likely false, but the serious belief in those superstitions had powerful consequences for the community. Harding Sawdust Bridge is a true testament to the power of folklore in the natural state. 